Hello children, how are you all? I am sure by now you must have started your online session and you must be enjoying it. Hello children, I am sure you all must have done the homework. Remember the question was, can you name any two, two things in which you feel gas? The answer is balloons, balls, tubes, etc. Yeah. And the second part was where you have to identify the states of matter for the arrangement of particles. So, I am sure you all must have done that also and the two examples for solid liquids and gases. I am just putting this picture for your reference. Today we are going to learn about changing states of matter. Matter can change its form from one state to another either by heating or cooling. Now when we take some ice cubes which is in solid form and when we keep it outside the freezer for some time it melts to water. So this process by which a solid changes into a liquid is called melting. Now when we take this liquid and keep it back in freezer on cooling it again changes into ice that is solid. So this process by which a liquid changes into a solid is called freezing. Now when this water is heated it changes into water vapor or steam. Now when a liquid changes into gas on heating is called boiling. Now when we take this steam and when it touches the cool surface of the lid. So we have kept some ice cubes on the lid. So when it touches the cool surface of the lid it changes into water. So this process by which water vapor or the gas changes into water is called condensation. Let us have a fast recall of the four process we learned just now. First one is the process by which the solids change into liquid due to heat is called melting. Second the process by which a liquid changes into solid is called freezing. Third the process by which liquid changes into gas on heating is called boiling and fourth the process by which gas changes into liquid on cooling is called condensation. In nature water keeps changing its form by cooling and heating continuously. This cycle is called water cycle. So today I will explain how all these processes are involved in water cycle. Now what happens is first the sun heats up water present in oceans, rivers and lakes and turns it into water vapor or steam. This is called evaporation. Now plants also lose water in the form of water vapor from their leaves into the air. This is called transpiration. Now as the water vapor rises up in the air, it starts cooling down and forms tiny water droplets around dust particles in the air. Now these water droplets come together to form clouds. This process is called condensation. Next is now when these clouds get heavy and cannot hold the water droplets. So they fall back to the earth in the form of rain, hail or snow. This process is called precipitation. Now after this water has fallen on the earth, now it seeps into the ground and is available to us in the form of ground water. The remaining water 
goes back into oceans lakes and river so this process is called collection now the sun continues heating up the water and the cycle goes on so this is called water cycle now let's have a fast recall of what we learned in this chapter matter first we learned about the states of matter and the arrangement of particles in solids liquids and gases then we learned about uh, changing states of matter in this we learned about melting freezing boiling and condensation and finally we learned about water cycle dear children i am sure the chapter is clear to you so we will meet in the next session till then keep learning